Hi, my name is John Cordy, and you're listening to uh, North Devon Radio with me, your host, John Cordy. As I said, uh, on today's show, we're going to be discussing uh, factory farming. Is it good or bad? Obviously. No. Today, I wanted to just uh, talk briefly about the Fender Princeton. I've just grabbed this amp because I've been selling some stuff that I'm not playing at the moment, and uh, this came up on eBay and I thought, oh, I've never really played a Fender Princeton properly and I know essentially this is where the Mesa Boogie stuff came from. Uh, I think the very first Mesa Boogies were modded Fender Princetons and so I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting piece of history or whatever and uh, the Fender Princeton kind of is a thing. This is a 65 reissue. I'll check this, but I, I think it's made in the US I think it's got a Jensen speaker in it as standard. Uh, aside from that, I think it's basically modelled on the 65 kind of Fender Princeton circuit. Now I've checked in the 65 catalogue, and interestingly, they were $169 at the time. Now that doesn't sound like much. In today's money, it's basically $1,400. I looked at how much the twin was back then. It was like $400, which works out as being like four grand in today's money, which is kind of crazy money for a twin. Some, the twin wasn't even their kind of poshest amp. I think their poshest amp was probably the Jewel Showman, um, which came with a, a 2x15 cab. Uh, I'll throw up an image here, but I think that came in at something like 7,500 in today's money, because uh, it was 900 and something dollars. Um, so kind of funny to see the, the value of these things and how some of them were four times the price of others and all that sort of stuff. Uh, anyway, so this was a little bit less than a Strat was at the time, uh, $170. I think you could pay the same for a Fender Deluxe, so a Deluxe reverb without the reverb essentially. And the only amp cheaper than this that Fender made was the Vibro Champ at the time, uh, which was about half the price. Anyway, all of that's uh, a bit of history. Uh, I guess there's going to be more playing on this video than anything else. Uh, this is sort of my first time plugging in and checking it out and seeing what it is.
players if you're expecting a clean amp if you're expecting to get some drive out of this basically I think it's probably not the amp for you probably uh, unless you're using pedals it's a great pedal platform I think not crazy clean headroom or anything I think up to around four or five on the the volume knob you can get uh, decent clean tones um, I really like the reverb and the vibrato so I'd say it's not necessarily a quiet amp but uh, the 15 watts does mean that you don't have you know as much clean headroom as uh, obviously an amp with higher wattage the other thing is you don't have a, a gain knob as such so in order to get more gain you essentially just have to turn the thing up louder um, and so this Torpedo Captor X and uh, was able to kind of get it, uh, you know, a nice kind of crunch territory. I say crunch, you know, like a sort of tube screamer levels of gain, and uh, that worked quite nicely uh, when you've got some control over the speaker and stuff into this speaker right here. And in this room, it's super spiky on my ears when I turn the gain up, it, when I turn the volume up loud to get the gain, uh, as you probably expect. So, probably, I think best used as like a clean uh, amp, I think, sort of around three or four. <laughs> Three, four, five on on the volume is is perfectly. Around 
five on the volume is kind of a sweet spot. Um, and you can push it up to maybe seven for a kind of more rehearsal -y kind of gig volume. Um, as I say, if you're a single coil player and you're looking to get a kind of amp gain out of the thing, you know, like a, you might expect with like a, I don't know, a Marshall style amp or something like that, um, this really isn't the guy for you. Um, it's mostly a clean amp, uh, I think. And it's also once you start to get to that kind of the gain levels that you might be used to, things are kind of spike and you don't have a presence control or anything, so I'm not sure that you get what you're looking for. I'll just play some humbuckers into it as well. <laughs> tremolo thing set to its lowest speed and it's still kind of and the reverb I've got set to four at the moment so that's quite a lively kind of reverb by the way so yeah um, let me know if there's certain things that I should be trying with this you know does it have its own favorite pedals I've tried a tube screamer into it but yeah super enjoying it and maybe a, an ideal kind of little amp to take around to things um, Certainly loud enough for home use and probably loud enough for, for most gigs and any gigs where you're going to be getting kind of loud loud I'd imagine you're going to be using a mic with it anyway so chances are you don't necessarily need to go any louder. If you're looking for pure clean headroom though obviously this isn't the guy for you and also if you're looking for something that's going to give you kind of crunch tones and above probably this isn't the guy for you but for kind of classic stuff um, maybe you know blues and these kinds of things where you want kind of a, a, a great clean tone edge of break up -y type stuff uh, I think it's really cool anyway thanks for watching and hopefully if you like this sort of video uh, and me try and play in through gear and stuff there's plenty more of this on the channel if you want to like and subscribe um, yeah thank you for stopping by cheers oh and a quick shout out to Keith from 5 Watt World uh, he's got a video about the history of the Princeton I think it's 1947 when they first came out before Leo Fender kind of invented some of the cool guitars and stuff that he would um, this little guy um, but yeah cheers <laughs>
Thank you.